guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my dresser makeover. I have been so indecisive with what to do with my Ikea Hemmings dresser. We've had it for years. My husband actually owned this dresser before I met him. So on this dresser, we had a lot of like paint splatters from previous bedroom makeovers that it just wasn't covered up. We weren't careful. Um, there's just, you know, a lot of like dents and scratches. So it's a good dresser, but it just kind of needed a little bit of a facelift. So recently I was on Instagram and I follow an Instagram account called Angela Rose Home and she does tons of home DIYs. Like she's a complete DIY badass. Like I love the stuff that she does and I just kind of fell in love with this dresser makeover that she did and she had the exact same dresser, same color, same everything and when I watched what she did to the dresser I realized I already had everything that I needed for this dresser makeover except for the hardware. So I ordered the hardware off of Amazon for fairly cheap, only cost me $24 and I went to work. So this is what this video is, is a tutorial kind of like walk you through and show you how I made over my dresser. And then down below, I will link the blog post that I am going to write about this kind of in more depth of how much it cost me, the items that you will need. Um, just kind of showing you in case you wanna do this to your dresser. So go down below, check that blog post out and if you follow me on Instagram or you want to follow me, I actually do a lot of my projects and show them in current time. So I do have a save highlight of when I made over this dresser in the time that I actually did it. So like real time. Uh, so go check that out and I hope you guys like this video and let's get to it. First things first, I have to clean off the dresser. I have tons of stuff up here that don't even really belong at all. It is from my latest DIY project, which I have not yet shown here on my YouTube, but if you head to my blog or my Instagram, I will show you there. That is where I did my closet renovation, and let me believe you, that was a labor of love. But I gotta empty all these drawers and be able to pull these drawers out, so that's what I'm doing here. If you guys decide to do a dresser makeover, I highly suggest using a laundry basket to put all your clothes in to help move them to wherever you're going to put them. It's just so much easier. I could not find ours for the life of me, but I realized I think I left it in my car from when we took everything to Goodwill recently and donated a bunch of stuff. So I really wish I had that laundry basket. It would have made this job 10 times quicker. <laughs> Okay, so the items that you will be needing for this project, and honestly, you, if you don't have a Hemmings Ikea dresser, you can do this to any dresser because the paint that I'm using is a chalk paint and it does not require any sanding. That's why I like chalk paint. It is nice if you do sand because sanding will never hurt. It will always help your paint stick better, but chalk paint is designed so you don't have to sand it. So and then I am using their matte clear coat, which literally has no shine at all. It is exactly what it says. It is a matte color. I want that for this dresser. I do not want to shine on it at all. This is the tray that it will be pouring the paint into. And then I always use my handy dandy like four inch high density foam roller. This is so good for a nice finish and not to have those brush marks. I will still be using a brush to get in all those tight areas and then if I can go over them again with the foam roller to make it smooth. And typically I do have a cool little tool that opens cans of paint, um, but I have somehow lost it in my last project. So I will be using a screwdriver that actually turns into a flathead. So I'll be using this to open my cans of paint and then I will be using the other side of this, the screwdriver part, to take these pulls off of the dresser because I am putting a whole new like hardware on this and I do not need the hole that's there. What I will fill the hole in with is this new product I've never used before. This is gonna be my first project using this 
is the DAP plastic wood filler and I will put that in once it's dry I will use this sand blocker sand blocker I'm not sure if that's correct wording I will use this sand block to sand that area and then we'll be good to go and then lastly I am changing the legs of this dresser I'm not modifying it too much I will be using these one by twos over here so what I am going to be using that is not pictured in my setup is a electric sander because I'm going to have to come back and sand these legs to the raw wood and then I will be using a saw and probably a screwdriver probably electric drill just because it's easier um, to attach these boards that I'm going to be adding to this dresser and you'll have to see to the very end to see exactly what I do. So. When going to take your knobs off, if you were going to keep these knobs and put them back on when you're done painting. I highly suggest sticking them in a basket or a Ziploc baggie or something so you don't lose them. But I am actually not going to be putting these knobs back on. I am changing out the knobs and turning them into pools. But I will be keeping these knobs because I actually really like these knobs. I will probably use them in the future for something else. So that's what I did is I went and I got a Ziploc bag and I just stuck them in there and put them in a drawer. If you plan to change out the knobs like I am, you are going to want to fill your old knob holes. If that's, you know, if you're using something that needs different measurements, then obviously you're going to have to fill them. And it's super easy to do. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it, but I just honestly used this plastic wood filler by DAP from Home Depot. And it was so easy. You just stick it in there. It dries super fast. You take a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper and you go over and make it flat. And it's literally, guys, it's as easy as that. It is not a hard thing to do. And it's like this stuff I actually really, really liked. I've used different brand of wood filler before and it was super messy and it just didn't sand well, but this DAP brand, I will continue to use it. It was more of a creamy fill rather than what I used before was more like a grainy fill. So funny story, my face looked a little worried in the beginning of this clip and that's because I have never sanded something with my orbital sander inside the house. I knew this was going to be messy. I don't know why I just didn't have my husband help me carry this dresser outside or something real fast. It wasn't like it was cold outside, but yeah, I was too lazy. I didn't want to and I was like, oh, it's just the legs. The legs are like three inches tall. It won't take long. No, it actually... it. It didn't take too long, but it was definitely a, a task and it was really, really loud and my kids were in bed. So I was like terrified it was going to wake them up. <laughs> the good thing about chalk paint is it dries so fast, like super fast. Like you got to work quick with it. It will dry within just a couple of minutes. So I was able to get on about two to three coats before I went to bed. And there was a couple spots I had to touch up in the morning and then I went ahead and I put the clear coat on in the morning right after we got back from church and I did two coats of that. And the clear coat is definitely something that you do not want to skip when putting any type of finish on any type of furniture. It just gives it that extra protectant layer on it and they always recommend that you do at least two coats of it.
This is the next morning right after we got back from church. This is me applying the second coat of the top layer. And like I said, you definitely don't want to skip this. It is going to only give you better results than having just the chalk paint on there. I know they say chalk paint is super durable, but honestly, I think anything will scratch if it doesn't have a top coat on it. This is where we were changing up the legs and sorry the angle is a little bit difficult. We were having some troubles because my husband had cut these pieces and only certain ones were fitting in certain areas. So we were trying to figure that out and I wanted to do it myself, <laughs> being the stubborn person that I am. So I was asking him if he could help me, but yet let me do it on my own. Last thing on the list was putting my new hardware on here. And guys, this hardware is so great. I love this. Like I love the look of it. These were super, super cheap too. You can actually buy them anywhere and everywhere. I looked at Home Depot, Lowe's, Wayfair, and it came down to obviously Amazon was cheapest. I got 20 of them for $24. And of course, you know, I had to buy a second one because I needed 12 pulls and it only came with 10 in a pack. But guys, I love these. This dresser literally only cost me $24 because I had all the paint and everything. If you guys want to do something similar, just go ahead and head to my description box. I will leave the blog post there and I list all of the items, the prices, I break it all down and then there's a written description on exactly what I did and all the tips and tricks for making over this dresser. I hope you guys like this type of video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.